singularly worst thing that has ever happened to me in New York happened last night. I was in bed last night watching the X-Files like tucked in. No lights on, nothing, you know, just having a nice little, nice cross-continent date with me fella. And I see a gigantic black mass crawl over my legs like not um, my legs were like under the sheets here but like it was like over the sheets <coughs> still like my skin is still crawling thinking about it the biggest cockroach i've ever seen in my life proper american movie cockroach are you kidding me bitch i'm dead like i was honestly speechless he was just like scurrying over here broom and i was trying to flick him off the bed and he was being so stubborn and then i realized he had like wings they're so big they're so big i flicked him off eventually and um, i could already tell he was dying because i felt like he wasn't really flying away or he wasn't running that fast <laughs> nothing's ever come out of there the gap the gap down there isn't big enough like i don't know where he came from see this was the first thing i saw when i pulled out the brush and i was like perfect perfect spray him jail him and uh, yeah i haven't looked at it since so let's hope he's dead it truly is like one of the worst things that has ever happened to me in the four years I've been in this. Oh, he's still alive. He's still alive. No, he looks fleshy. I literally can't. I can't. I can't. Oh my God. Well, I suppose this is living in an expensive apartment in New York City. Honestly, I truly believe that there's somebody or up there that loves to play pranks that loves to keep me in check. The timing of that is absolutely as unbelievable as the travesty of dealing with it itself. Pest control knocked on the door and they come once a month. It's part of the rent, you know, that's what we pay for. Up some gel on the insides of your cabinets and then they leave. I didn't see him last month because I was away and he asked me like, okay, routine question. Do you have any issues at the moment? I was just like, no, it's all good here. And he was just like, what about the rest of the apartment? And I was just like, no, never. The first year I was here, I dealt with like a gigantic centipede that came in through the window. Nice chat with him. He left, all was well. And then it's just kind of like, are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? Wish me luck. Thanks for that moral support, guys. I really needed it. <laughs> many a time running over to the food bazaar um but yeah i've decided to walk home like i said because like look at look at me i'm wearing a leather jacket at the end of march we gradually gotten warmer every year that i've been here yeah, i have my laptop with me because i just came out of a dj lesson um it's like a 24 hour like dj booth thing that you can like book a spot into there and it was so good it was my first time getting to practice on CDJs, which are, you know, the setup, Pioneer DJ setup that you would use if you were actually playing at a venue per se. And it's it's actually way more comfortable to use it than doing it at home with like the laptop and all, you're, like, you're not squinting as much. I know there's some of you that are gonna ask who I'm getting lessons from. It's not that it's a secret or anything. I just haven't asked her permission and I don't wanna like have people blowing up her instagram she doesn't want that so yeah my recommendation is reach out to local djs i want to support local and that's what i did this is my little morning routine i've drank my cup of bone broth so that's done but i sit with my breakfast i look at my planner i tick off anything from yesterday that hasn't been ticked i see if anything needs to be moved to another day and obviously we see what's 
on the agenda today. Guys, I'm shook. I'm outside La Cantine and it's like the most spring summer day of all time. There's so many people out and I today it's just so beautiful and I'm like getting that glimpse of summer which honestly just keeps me keeps me coming back to New York. See what I mean? Sun is shining in the sky. Hey, hi, hello from me and my squidgy slippers. For the open toe slippers again, I really liked those waffle ones I had, but I feel like they were giving me like a fungal situation because like they were so unbreathable. Like my toes always felt clammy in there. But yeah, I'm kind of feeling like very, very put together now that I've done my makeup. I actually just shot a bit of a, a job for Merit Beauty, which I love because you guys know I kind of like easy natural finger makeup that um emmer chamberlain sunday best aritzia collection they let me pick out the things that i've been wearing like she knows how to curate a little collection like i put on this baby tee i'm a bit of a fabric slash cut fanatic and uh, yeah if you're stuck for like a baby tee that isn't too tight on the arms that's like heavyweight cotton but soft and like stretchy it's like a brushed cotton i wasn't expecting it to feel so nice with baby tees and um, the arms can be a bit tight and i've kind of got like hormonal weight gain on my arms so it's always just like it fits on the body but sometimes it would be a bit tight on the arms a white t-shirt vintage levi's day also new moon new moon and aries day i'm so excited <laughs> I love this jacket, but because I have like a funny shaped little pea head, I look like a bird. Just said bye to my friends, one of my really close friends, Adele, I'm so sad. My OG bestie here in New York is going back to Ireland for a job for the foreseeable, and I don't know when she'll be back. So we said our goodbyes, and now very aptly, it's turned from a sunny day to a rainy day. Uh, go soothe my sorrows and go vintage shopping. I have something in mind that I really need. And I really want men's trousers. So let's see what we find. First stop, Urban Jungle. They don't seem to have suit pants. And how I ever find a blazer. So I've pulled my trousers up because I'm trying to imagine what it would look like with like a dress underneath or a skirt. I did it. I was going back and forth and then I realized it was six dollars and then I'm willing to make a six dollar mistake but I actually think I really like it. Sort of looking for a black one for the black. Oh, this one's closed. Dang it. Okay, never mind. I am going to go to other people's clothes now on the way home because that's a pretty big vintage store. Still no trousers, no suit trousers, but I did find a t-shirt. You're coming home with me. Every other type of pants cords, chinos, jeans, shorts, but no suit pants. Tell me you're on your period without telling me you're on your period. Nutella for breakfast. Very Daisy Jones and the six Camilla Marone vibes this morning. I feel like every vlog I'm on my period, but I think now that I'll maybe be uploading more frequently, you won't have to like listen to me talk about that but yeah it came last night it's taken me ages to make breakfast like i just couldn't decide periods are weird aren't they you just wake up the next day so disorientated i think i opened the fridge about 10 times when you're on your own you just you have to do it all like there's no one there to sort of pick you up when you're you're not doing so great let's chat birth control shall we so i've decided to stop my birth control before going over i had been thinking about it and i was just like you know what I'm gonna see how it goes. Maybe I'll bring it up to him while I'm there. She took me ages to bring it up. I don't know why I was like so weird and nervous about it, but like immediately he was just like, yeah, that's fine. It's your decision. You do what you want. So I have just realized that like there is only seven days out of the month that you can get pregnant. And I think I'm at the point in my life where I'm willing to kind of do the work and like tracking my cycle. One of those like daisy thermometers. It's kind of like natural cycles as well. I'm planning to get ovulation strips. To be fair, I've actually really liked the NuvaRing which is kind of like a localized, it's like the size of a hair tie and it just, you put it up there 
for three weeks and then you take it out and you can have a period if you want you can leave it in for four weeks if you want there's just risks associated with all birth control and i think the older you get like i'm 30 now uh the higher the risks are i think i'm just at an age now where i, I want to pursue the natural route see how we get on i think it'll suit my lifestyle more okay i'm gonna stop waving around pieces of toast at you truly love my linen sheets from brooklyn in i've had them for a few years they've just softened up over time and oh they're so cozy however the one downside to linen bedding is that it leaves so much like lint and linen bedding will never stop shedding it will always always lose fibers the carrot salad girlies at on your period it will really really reduce menstrual cramping sore nipples all of like high estrogen symptoms that and the good old raspberry leaf tea that i have up there the reason i'm still talking about it is because so many of you dm'd me saying that you've had like your first periods almost pain-free and i just feel like every woman should experience that the way that i like to have it most is in a pickle so with um some apple cider vinegar water maple syrup garlic and salt this way i found to prep them is with this julienne peeler i just like go ham and i have the whole bag nearly done in less than five minutes when i'm on my period i can just chuck it on my plate it's all ready to go it's just i found it handy finally dinner i'm so hungry uh, it's been a long day but yeah i have not been having very aesthetically pleasing dinners but i have been focusing on trying to get as much variety of fruit and veg in my week craving sweet potato i haven't had sweet potato and donkeys a new sauce i usually don't buy sauces because honestly i always find them so disappointing i buy them try them and i'm like this is terrible hopefully it'll be nice i feel like it'd be a nice combo with sweet potato it's vietnamese night la canteen i've got a date i'm really loving this career pivot to hypnotist because a client just brought me these beautiful pastries she just went home she was such a gem and um, yeah i've had such an interesting week guys two to three clients scheduled in for um like practice ah this is like my third full one i'm so excited the other one went so well as well she had a really really interesting session like the kind of sessions that i read about in some of the like dolores cannon books and in some of the coursework and stuff for the past life portion she didn't go back to a past life and this is something dolores cannon has said in sort of like the last few years like the last sort of five to ten years is that there's less people recalling past lives and there's more people coming from like another place like incarnating sort of as like somebody that's never been in a physical earth body before this was one of those cases and it was just like i got so excited guys because this is very much like in the realm of the like the mysterious stuff that i i love and a part of this job for me as a facilitator is to be an investigator into you um i'm not doing anything it's all led by you basically she described this life as a being uh on a plane felt like just uh, energy i suppose or some kind of light body that not necessarily like looks like a physical body she said the sky was made up of lots of beautiful light and different colors of light a big key part of knowing when somebody is really in a past life is usually they'll cry they'll shed a tear and that's something that you really can't fake you can't fake emotion when you're under um or when you're in this state you know it really adds to the validity of embodying that past life you know you're not making conscious aware decisions to put on a performance that was a really interesting personality to explore i'm going to go through her recording now and clip it down so that the hypnotic part isn't in it because they would fall asleep if they listen to it and i'm going to send it to her and she's going to listen to it over the weekend but it was a really successful session lovely young girl you guys are coming through from left right and <laughs> and center but it's also put me out of my comfort zone i feel like i've just jumped in the deep end inviting strangers into my home and hoping for the best that's kind of an update there they're all my procedure notes that's where i sit um will we have to get an office i don't know <laughs> no i'm enjoying doing these um Free sessions i have already signed up for level two though so i am going to be dipping my toes into the next phase of this journey now that it's something i know i really 
enjoy. I think I've had some good karma come around because a lot of people have asked have I done this process and the question is no because I've been trying to find the right practitioner and it's actually one of the first people that I saw like back when I was in Vancouver and I just felt very drawn to this person it's actually a man which I didn't think like I kind of was like gravitating more towards like trying to find a woman but all the women I just I wasn't gelling with them it's a bit like finding a therapist he already seems like he's going to be a bit of a mentor figure I just get really good energy from him he's willing to share his knowledge so openly offered the session to me for free as like a courtesy to like a fellow QHHT practitioner and like these sessions can cost like hundreds of dollars and for him to like spend five or six hours of his time potentially with me is so generous and I even like emailed him back and I was just like look I have a really hard time accepting this generosity um, it's kind of my own block that I have in life is like receiving love, receiving good things and just saying yes, okay, and thank you. Funnily enough, it's probably the one time in my life I'm not looking for guidance or really into being obsessed with self-exploration because it's something that I definitely love. I love any tools that like help you get to know yourself better. But yeah, it should just be an enjoyable experience. I I'm in a good place to have a session. Not that you have to be in a good place, but yeah, I feel like I have no expectations for it. And I think that's the best way to be with these types of sessions is just to go and know that whatever you hear is exactly what you need to hear right now. Hello from your favorite egghead. I filmed, filmed, filmed and offered two vlogs. So there will be another one next week. Notifications on, on, on. You can customize them. They won't be annoying. I've already noticed that a lot of you have missed the the random additional uploads. So I did not film an outro and I felt like it just feels weird to not film an outro. But yeah, there was no like crazy good outfits or anything like that. I think maybe next week's vlog, but it is. It was a super sleepy week. I've been so, I don't know if it's like this full moon energy going around or whether I'm just tired from doing my normal schedule plus all of the sessions as well. Um, but yeah, I've, it's been a sleepy, a sleepy girl, sleepy girl week. I already half edited the next vlog and I'm just like excited to share it. I'm excited to be uploading more. This feels like so good to be kind of showing up almost every week now instead of like twice a month. Um, I don't know how I'm doing it guys. I really don't, but yeah, more outfits to come. Like things are starting to spice up. The weather is getting warm. Gigs are starting to happen. I'm more inspired to like get dressed up, play with makeup, all of that stuff. So I will see you next week. Um, please let me know how you're doing. I've been connecting with people a lot over Instagram DM, but I always like to kind of keep up with you guys and just like see where your head's at. If you've been going through it, put it in the comments. We're all really supportive there. And I'm sure some of you will reply to each other's comments and I'll be there too. So yes, are we celebrating a good week? Are we having a rough week? This is a little permission to have that little celebration or a little bit of a vent about tough times in the comments when you may not have any other outlet to. Like I said, I'll be in the comments. You're very much welcome to join us there. And I will see you on the next one. <laughs>